Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, which is a greeting of peace, peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of The Dean Show. Every so often, we get a super special guest. All of our guests are special, but then we got super special. My good friend, who I have had an opportunity to work with several times, and I get excited every time he's here in Chicago, he visits us here at The Dean Show studio. So when we come back, we're going to be talking about the prophets, and we're going to be letting you learn about some of these messengers of God also. So when you come back, get ready for our good friend, Sheikh Yusuf Estes here on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. There's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah la ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice Assalamu alaikum Sheikh Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh It's nice to be on the show again It's always a pleasure to have you here on the Dean show I think every time I come up to this your studios go higher and higher it seems like it, 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 we're up really high this time Alhamdulillah, all praises to Allah who's given us this ability to do this dawah, to be here trying to educate the people and to have such wonderful guests as yourself to be able to share the beautiful message of Islam. I couldn't help but hear when you started talking about super special <laughs> because it, it tickled me because the subject we're going to be talking about tonight has something in it uh, of, of, in Islam that uh, you don't find in other religions. We're going to get straight to the topic but we want to know a little bit because there's some non-Muslims probably too non. Oh, okay. They don't know who you are. Yes. You used to be a former preacher. Your father was the a doctor minister, of divinity. Yeah. Yeah. And he really Not knew doctor of divinity. He was a minister. He was a minister. So you came over from Christianity to Islam. Sure. Just take one minute and sum it up. What happened? Well, basically, I had met a Muslim. My father met a, a Muslim. And uh, he said we would be doing business together. And I thought, well, this would be a great chance for me to work on my conversion skills, do some of my missionary work on him. And I had heard uh, some things about Muslims from some of the evangelists that I knew and some that were quite famous, actually. And I had thought a lot of bad things about Islam and Muslims. And to me, it seemed rather easy that I should be able to you know, propagate mm -hmm. Christianity, go to him and uh, convert him. But it didn't work out like that. It mm -hmm. was totally different. All of the misconceptions that I had about Islam were clarified and cleared up, uh, in my mind at least, because I could see the way this man was behaving, the things that he talked about, I mean, especially when he talked about his country, Egypt, and, and it didn't fit the stories that I had been getting. So that was one thing. Another thing was to see the good habits of the gentleman. And he said that the, the teachings of Islam are thus and so. Even though I spent three months with this man, traveling with him, working alongside of him, I didn't really think about converting to Islam. I was just thinking about taking some of the nice qualities he had and put them into practice as he had because, you know, Christianity teaches these things as well. Mm -hmm. But it was a strange uh, story that happened. What I invite people to do is go to a website we mm -hmm. have so they can get the whole story over there because it takes about... 45 minutes to tell it, What's but you can, uh, yeah, it's called YusufEstes.com. YusufEstes.com, and they can hear the whole story on yeah. how you accept spell it, Islam. Spell it like this, Y-U-S-U-F, then my last name is E-S-T-E-S, -E dot com, and the whole story is there. Okay, great. Now, we thought it'd be wonderful with our super special guests to talk about <laughs> some of the super human beings who are living, who are propagating the way of life that was ordained from the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we got a lot of isms out there. We want to learn a little bit about these prophets. We want to learn who they were, what they taught. You say isms, you're talking about different uh, uh, divisions within religion. Exactly. The different sects that come out of Absolutely, it. yes. Yeah. So we want to yeah. see that some of these prophets that we're going to first talk about, the first man, Adam. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about him and tell us so we can get well acquainted with who he was, what he taught, what his mission was. Well, to start with, you're right that we do consider these people as 
uh, special people. Let's, let's say that. We consider all the prophets to be very special. Then amongst some of those special people, we would have those who we would say are super special. And, and, but I want to clarify that to say that in Arabic we have something called a nabi. This is a prophet. Mm -hmm. The plural of this is anbiya. So from all of the anbiya, all of them are nabis. I'm going to use an English S there. But then within this group of special people, you have super special who are called rasul. And now all of those that are rasul are also nabis because they're special, but they're super special. And if Allah accept me to say it that way, the distinction would be, first of all, anyone who is on the category of being a prophet in general, one of the special people, then that would mean that he is being divinely guided by Almighty God. He's a human just like you and I, except that he's special in that he is here for a purpose to mm -hmm. really communicate to the people and talk with them. Now, what will be the deciding difference between them in Arabic will be whether or not he has a text which is memorized and or uh, uh, written down. Yes. It, well, uh, if they have a, a text, it will be definitely memory, and some of those, they had some that were also uh, written down. Mm -hmm. uh, some were preserved and some weren't. Yeah. So that's the general thing. Now you want to go to Adam. Adam, now this is very interesting for me because when I visited so many countries, and many of them not Muslim countries, and I would ask them, in your teachings of your traditional history and so on, who do you have as a first man if you have such a story? And all of them said, yes, we do have a story of a first man, mm -hmm. and all of them are saying his name is Adam. Yeah? Yeah, so that's can, in every that's, language. It's a good now, common ground there. Ad Adun, Adam and Adun. Mm -hmm. I found Adun also mentioned. Yeah. So I found this in, of course, uh, the Romantic languages, for instance, anything with the Latin root, uh, French, Italian, Spanish, and so on, they're going to be Adam, as mm -hmm. is English. You find it in German, you find it in uh, a lot of the, the European languages as mm -hmm. well. Adam, Adam, Adam. It's very interesting to me because if we did the understand, that means we're acknowledging there's one common grandfather to everybody, at least according to their folklore. The funny part is, though, we all acknowledge that everybody say Adam is our grandfather, mm -hmm. but who's your God? And then we get into all these different stories. Yeah. And as far as that goes, it appears according to the uh, anthropologists and those who study ancient history of mm -hmm. human beings, they will tell us that now they've changed their mind. They used to say that the people had all these different gods, and then at some point in time, they all came together and decided, you know, let's start working on a, a one God a theory. And they usually associate it with Judaism. But now their studies have indicated that even way back, that it appears the older history, they did have the idea of one God, and later this became mm -hmm. multiple gods. This fits right along with the teaching of Islam. Now, how did it start with Adam? Was Adam created, then he was put in the garden, and then how did this whole thing happen with the sin that he committed? Can you start to tell us about this story? The story for the Jews is going to be the same story for the Christians because they picked it up from that. The Christians yeah. picked it up from that. The story for the Muslims is so identical that many people have tried to postulate that Muhammad Sallallahu copied this story that he heard it from the Jews or he was taught by some monks or something like that. It's not true. He did, definitely was a prophet, and he definitely knew this by divine inspiration that came to him uh, from Almighty Allah. But the story still is the same because it's still the same truth. The yeah. truth was that God brought all of the creation together first. Then, after everything is said and done, as far as the creation is concerned, then Allah creates Adam. Mm -hmm. But according to Islam, we know that there was another creation before mankind, and these are called the jinn. Mm -hmm. uh, some have said that this in, and the Jewish teaching might have been the, uh, I think they call them Ephraim or Ethrim. How do you translate jinn in English? Is that a sp spirits? Can you say spirits? Some people say that. They always say sprites or spirits uh, or genies. Uh, it's taken from the word jinn. But the, I think the proper thing to do is just to leave it in Arabic because they don't really have much on it anyway. Yeah, okay. 
So to say Jin, which is the plural of, of a genie, you know, yeah. that, or Jenny, mm -hmm. yeah, they existed prior to us. These were not angels. Mm -hmm. They had free will, free choices that they had, and they did as they pleased. And one of them was worshiping God, one God, uh, three times a day. At the time of the rising and setting of the sun, and then when the sun is directly overhead, uh, the three times that we are now forbidden yes. to worship, those ten-minute spreads there. And it is said that he was actually fighting against the disbelievers of his own kind. And they were really bad. There were some very evil ones. And God reinforced him with angels who came along with him and helped him to fight and to put down all this rebellion and bad stuff that was going on. Then Allah raised him up to a very high status and made him amongst the angels, but not of the angels. Mm -hmm. In other words, he was going around with the angels and actually worshiping God and praying with these angels, mm -hmm. but he wasn't one. That explains something we're going to come to now. Yeah. The creation of Adam. The creation of Adam, according to the Quran and mm -hmm. the teachings of Muhammad Sallallahu is not just that God took some earth and blew life into it. It's much more detailed. We know that that Adam was very big, he was a huge man, and that he was formed from the clay of the earth, and so without a head. And then finally, God puts the head on him and blows life into him. The spirit of life was blown into him through his nose, and when at the moment it happened, he sneezed, a chew, And that was the first uh, movement that he did, was to sneeze. Mm -hmm. Then he, after he sneezed, he said, Alhamdulillah, which means the uh, praises to Allah. Mm -hmm. That's his first words, praise be to God. And then the response came back to him, Yahumakum Allah. And this is uh, in, um, the mercy also to you. Yes. And then he says back to that, Yadikum Allah wa yuslibalakum. And the guidance of Allah for you and he makes your affairs easy for mm -hmm. him. So this is the first dialogue of Adam. Now, yeah. Adam is not born. He's created, and the spirit that he has in him is blown into him by Almighty Allah. So this is an amazing creation. Now, just before that takes place, though, yes. while he's still standing there, before he is breathing, all the creation has been ordered to bow down. All the angels have been told, bow down. Now, this is for all the jinn and, and angels. And all of them bowed down, except for this one who had been elevated up with angels. Mm -hmm. And he refused. He said, I'm not going to bow down. Direct commandment from the Creator. He refused to do it. Yeah, and he said why. He mentions why. He said, I'm better than he is. I'm made from a smokeless fire. The content, the makeup of a jinn is to be made from a fire. Whereas the angels are made out of light. Yeah. Either case, we wouldn't see them. But this is a different substance. So the one he's saying, I'm better than this guy, mm -hmm. so I refuse to bow down. But the angels are better than him because they're absolutely pure and they're bowing down, so why can't you get with the program, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, he says, why? He says, because I'm better than him. So this arrogance, called kibber in Arabic, is the reason why he is condemned. It's for this reason. Even though he had done some good things, been raised up to a very high level, but he refused to obey a law. And he said, I'm better than him. So his arrogance, anybody's arrogance, will not fly. It won't work in front of Allah. Because Allah is the only one who is the greatest of all. It's called kabara. That's the root. And Allah is akbar. We say, Allahu akbar. Allah is greatest. And kibar, this is pride, come from the same root. means you put yourself up like, see how great I am. And this doesn't work with Allah. Egomaniac. It's considered a form of making partners with the law, yeah, actually. So this is dangerous or stuff. shirk. Yeah. Unforgivable sin. Uh -huh. We talked about that in a previous program. Yeah. The unforgivable sin of shirk. Well, this is the blasphemy, and this uh -huh. is what he had done. This is what's so horrible. Because if a person will do that, he'll do anything. Yes. If you know there's a God, and he obviously knew. I mean, he's right there with the angels, hello. Yeah. And he knows that that was a command. It wasn't of any ignorance whatsoever. It was just 
real stubbornness. Say, you know, okay, God, tell me what to do and I won't do it. Mm -hmm. mm, this is very scary. Yeah. Uh, may Allah save all of us I from mean, that. I mean, so now, how, did, how does the story of the garden go, where they're both in the garden? Does this come next now? Yeah, well, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, that he said, لَقَدَ خَلَقْنَ الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَسَّنِ تَقْوِيمِ That barely I have created the mankind from the very greatest of molds, the best molds. So this is the, the statement that comes. Now, in this condition, he has to be in the best place. Mm -hmm. And he was. He was in a place called Aden or Eden. We call it Eden, the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing that happens, Allah creates for him a mate mm -hmm. from a bone in his side, which we call the rib bone. And then Allah gives life to it. It's very interesting that the woman is not considered to be below a man, like under the foot. Didn't come from a foot bone. Yeah. Didn't come from the head bone, but from his side. And then this way, she's equal to him in front of a law. That is a very nice concept as well. Then what happens next is they're told to enjoy all the fruits of the paradise. To eat, to drink, to enjoy, and there's so much in paradise. And I hope all of us get to go, Amen. be there, and enjoy this firsthand. Mm -hmm. But for sure, this is what they were going through. They were enjoying this, this wonderful place. But they were commanded, enjoy everything here except for the fruit of this one tree. That you shall not eat. Mm -hmm. Now this story is exactly the same here that you'll find in the Bible. Don't eat from this tree. Yes. And the devil now comes to them, each of them, not to her and then she goes to him. This is different from Christianity and Judaism. Because in our story we have that the devil went to her, yes, and she ate. Then the devil goes to Adam and he ate. So we are not putting any blame on her. Mm -hmm. We're not blaming her for what Adam did. This is not permitted in Islam to blame others for what you do. And both of them had sinned by disobeying the commandment. It wasn't because they ate fruit. There was plenty of other fruit there. It was because they disobeyed. They were told, don't eat that fruit. So that's interesting now. The devil was told to do something and he didn't do it. Mankind was told not to do something and he did it. Mm -hmm. But both of them had sinned. Now, here's another difference, yes. though. That Eve and the prophet Adam both repented. Now, all of them were put out of paradise. Not because of their sin, but because this is how Allah had always planned it anyway. This is a much healthier understanding psychologically. You know, we didn't get kicked out of paradise because we sinned, because Allah already knew we would do that. In fact, he created us to be normal, to make mistakes, and then repent to him. So this whole idea of repentance is different in Islam than it might be in some religions that you might have heard of in the past. Because Islam is not saying that the sin is what makes you filthy in front of God. It's the fact that you refuse to repent because we have two examples. The devil who sinned and Adam who sinned. Adam and Eve are forgiven mm -hmm. because they asked to be forgiven. Yes. Who did they ask? They ask Allah. And then along the way, they won't do that sin anymore. You know, I learned from my lesson. I shouldn't have done it. I made a mistake. And I'm sorry. I really am sorry. And whatever you want me to do to make up for it, I'll do it. So this is the concept we have in Islam. And so the devil, though, he says, no, I am not, still not going to ask for forgiveness because now if he does it, he has to go in front of Adam and put his head down. And he says, I, I'm never going to do that. I will not prostrate in front of this guy. I'm better than him. Mm -hmm. Now, the devil did ask for something. He said, let me live as long as there are any offspring from Adam. Grant me that. He's asking God. He's praying directly to God. And he says, grant me that I will live long enough to be there for every single son of Adam. And I will tempt them and I will come to them from every angle that I can. And you will see they are not worthy of what you said about them being so great. And I will tr trick them or uh, convince them, you know, uh, mislead them yes. all to hell. So he made a, a request and Allah, Allah granted, it. granted it to him. Well, do you know what the scholars said about that? What did they say? They said that the reason that he got what he wanted 
even though he was the devil, is because he only asked Allah. So Allah was like letting him have final, one last request. He should have used his last request to ask forgiveness. But he didn't. Of course not. Yeah. And it, this is showing again the mercy of Allah and the forgiveness of Allah. Now you might think, well, that would be it. Allah would never give him another chance. Some of the other prophets we're going to be talking about also ask questions about this subject. I mentioned to you, Moses, for instance, asked Allah, well, what about the devil? And now, could he repent? And, and if he did, would you accept it? So here we find that, yes, but he would have to go to the grave of Adam and he would have to prostrate for what he didn't do before. And the devil says, look, if I wouldn't do it while he was alive, I'm sure not going to do it now. So he's still the same today as he was then. He refuses to repent. This makes a lot of sense now. They made a mistake. They turned to the creator alone. Allah, he forgave them. Let's look at another belief that you used to believe, being a Christian, that we have somewhat of a similar story. But there's some blame being focused here on the woman or the man. Can you talk about this? We can, but we'll be living out part of the story, I was going to tell you. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to finish that, that Jesus, peace be upon him, also mm -hmm. asked a similar question to God. If, if the devil uh, could possibly repent, and should that happen, would you then allow him to come to paradise? If he repented, would you forgive him and everything? And Allah said, yeah, I would. But I already know he won't. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to be stubborn either. Don't be stubborn. Don't be stubborn. So we don't have, from this story that we're seeing, the stigma of that original sin. No. Original sin is something that you used to believe in, is it not? Yeah, the original sin is mentioned uh, in the Bible as coming to us from Adam and Eve. And mm -hmm. it's just passed on generation upon generation. And there's no way for us to escape it. You're born in this original sin of the forefathers. And in one case, uh, Allah says, uh, uh, or the God of the Bible anyway, is saying that uh, he visits the iniquity of the descendants of those who hate him onto the 10th generation. We don't have that in Islam. What we have in Islam is that every single soul, as soon as they're born, they're innocent, regardless of their religion or lack of it from the parents. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about passing on original sin. Now, what lesson can we learn from our great-great-great-grandfather, the first man, when we see all these different ways of life out there, calling and saying that they're the only way or they're, they're the truth, or maybe some even have like a buffet. We'll mix everything up and we'll just do it our own way or do our own thing. I would say we come back to the first man. How did he do it? What way of life was he upon? Well, according to what we know, he believed, of course, in the God that created him and blew mm -hmm. life into him. So that would be the first and foremost of all religion to believe in one God because mm -hmm. he believed in one God. And that religion or way of life, because it wouldn't be a formal religion like we'd understand today. It was a way of life. Now, that's interesting because that's the exact same term used in the Quran when Allah says, in Adina in Dalahil Islam, for sure the only way of life is to do Islam. Islam is the surrender, the submission to Almighty God in peace. So he was surrendering to the one God, the creator of all things. Mm -hmm. That's it. He was that, was, that was his religion. And his biggest thing was to repent. That was, if you want to say, well, what was his religion about? It was about learning a lesson about what you do after you've disobeyed God. Because we all disobey God. There's mm -hmm. no such thing as even the greatest of all prophets of all times has still made mistakes. Yes. And we won't say that Jesus is without mistakes. We're going to say we don't know what his mistakes are. We'll be talking about that later on in the series. But uh, for now, just leave it at this, that every human being makes mistakes because the rest of the verse. I gave you the first part. That verily Allah has created the human beings in the best of molds. Then... He reduced himself down. This is in parentheses here. He was reduced to the lowest of low, but we know it's by his own shortcomings. This is interesting now. So we see something natural, something pure, that the first man worshipped the one God alone. He turned to him and he forgave him. Mm -hmm. So how can somebody 
be upon what the first man was upon, the first prophet. It's actually the natural inclination of a child to believe only in one God. So every child is still being born in the best way. And this would be the meaning. Because you might find a child today who is born deformed, a child who is, uh, have a mental problem, anything like this. And if this is the case, then some people would say, well, I don't see where you get off saying everybody's born perfectly. We didn't say that. We said their best shape, their best mold. In what way? In that they all have this inclination toward believing in one God and worshiping Him alone. No partners. We have some people that have been following the show, Sheikh. And we know today that some people need motivation. Mm -hmm. There's somebody out there, and we're hoping that that one person, and he wants to do the right thing. He wants mm -hmm. to do what his creator wants him to do on his terms. What would he have to do right now? We have a couple minutes to enter into the way of life that all the prophets of God lived and taught. Well, let's don't exclude the women. Women and men. Yeah, let's, let's don't exclude them. Absolutely not. Uh, I would like uh, to remind myself of what I did when I first came to this same conclusion. I realized that on my own I could never solve and resolve all of the different issues of beliefs and religions and teachings. But I did know that I could do something about my own life. And that's a pretty simple thing. It's to clear out your mind and your heart of hatred mm -hmm. and preconceived notions, racism and nationalism, because you cannot have anything inside of you that's like that against people and still be successful with the law. Makes you've got to get sense. rid of it. Yes. So once that's cleared away, then you've got a vacuum and you need to fill the vacuum. The vacuum is real easy to fill. You say, Allah, guide me. Or if you don't believe that his name is Allah, say, God, guide me. But if you say, Moses, guide me or Jesus, guide me or something like that, then you've already put a human form to it and you're not going to get the same result. So no vis visual picture, no, no, nothing that you no, no, can no, no, imagine no, no, no. is God? No. Okay. No, no, no. So call on Him alone, ask Him to guide you. That's simple. It's something that makes sense. It's not confusing. Ask the one who created you to guide I'm you. I'm going to ask you a question. Now. Sure. Didn't you do this exact same thing yourself at some point in your life? I did the exact same thing. Yes, I did. I actually I humbled myself, and I would ask the Creator. i say, you know what? What's this all about? I need some assistance here. And in different words, I, I basically asked for the guidance. That's what I did. I, the end of the story of me coming to Islam is when my friend told me, you know, we were discussing real heavy one night, and he said, listen, this is not about you and me and you and your father, you and your wife. It's about you and God, so why don't you go off and talk to him? Mm -hmm. I did, and in my heart, really strong, I said, oh, God, guide me. And here I am today. Thank you for being with us today. We're going to have to continue on and have you back. Please take... A second, we're going to wrap up. we got one minute left. You have some websites that people can visit if they want some more information. I would recommend to those who are Christian to find what we do believe about the Bible and Christianity. They can go to 911bible.com, bibleislam.com. Those are two different websites. Then to get started on the faith in general, we have another one called bridgetofaith.com. And you see a lot of videos over yeah. there that we've done, Bridge to Faith. And then we have another one to help us understand who is God. It's called GodAllah.com. Thank you very much. Jazakallah Haram, may the creator of the heavens work. Allah rewards you for being with us today and helping everybody benefit from the knowledge that you have. And I'd like to thank you for being with us again for another episode of The Dean Show. Do the right thing. Do what the first man did. He called upon the creator of the heavens and the earth alone and he asked for forgiveness, he forgave him. He asked for the guidance, he gave it to him. And you do the right thing. Ask for the guidance. And come back here every week on The Dean Show. Until next time, we'll see you then. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه 
يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping I arise and ask a lot to forgive me Oh Allah you see, oh Allah you know All the sins I do I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart I'm your sinful slave, you're my loving Lord I'm the one who runs away, oh Allah guide me 